Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. This is going to be a video about how to design effects in a new way. Um, and I think that I don't think this workflow has been explored that deeply. I think it's a kind of a new workflow with uh, some virtual reality software called Gravity Sketch. And so Gravity Sketch is primarily a tool for 3D modeling. It's actually more of a concept design and modeling tool. And, um, you know, I've ex been exploring Gravity Sketch for some other uses for some independent filmmaking um, that I'm working with a friend and some other people on to kind of develop some independent filmmaking workflows um, around Unreal and Blender and kind of uh, VR workflows as well. Um, but this is a different way to use Gravity Sketch and, and kind of using uh, some of these 2D effects that I've been talking about on some, some of the last videos. Uh, and basically how we can kind of design these in a new way with combining uh, Nuke and Gravity Sketch. So essentially this this is the this is just a kind of a slap uh, kind of comp of like a wormhole type of thing. Um, definitely not a, a final quality type of effect. This is I spent like maybe an hour and a half on it. Um, so just a quick uh, kind of sandbox type of thing playing around. This is just a Nuke, but fundamentally this concept of taking these textures. And ignore the script if you would, because it's just uh, this is really a sandbox. It's not like a, a real shot, uh, just playing around. But fundamentally, taking these two-dimensional textures and wrapping wrapping them into three D geometries in different ways was where the idea came from. Uh, but essentially, we can do a more advanced version of this, um, like kind of modifying these textures and placing them. You know, for example, I created this texture from some of the elements, uh, and kind of basically just wrap this onto a cylinder in 3D space. But rather than just using cylinders, we can use Gravity Sketch's NURBS modeling workflow to like create really crazy geometries that wouldn't be really possible or easy to do in Nuke. And it would be kind of difficult to do even in Houdini or Maya or whatever software you're using because uh, it's just not, you know, you'd have to use curves and like extruding along curves and NURBS and stuff like that. So. Um, yeah, I'll kind of present that workflow and how we can actually use it. Um, I'll just show a couple examples of some of the 2D textures I created going into Gravity Sketch. So I'll start with some materials like some of these, and these are all from that library. And um, I kind of used uh, Chris Fryer's node. Uh, I'll, I'll release his video or his uh, tutorial in the description there. Um, he had a really awesome tutorial about how to use this sort of uh, bi-directional god ray node that he created, which creates a god ray in two directions instead of one uh, from a point. And uh, in that tutorial, he actually mentioned a way to kind of kind of spectral map through it, um, which I had never actually seen before. It was really, really unique workflow. I thought it was really clever. And uh, so I thought to kind of take that method and apply it to some of these elements. And it turns out you can create some really crazy stuff uh, by just doing this. So you start to get these like really cre uh, kind of crazy, um, you know, rainbow type of effects that you can create. And there's all kinds of stuff you can do with it. Um, but fundamentally what it's doing, and you can watch his original tutorial, uh, it's just, it's like an advanced tile almost. You can tile and then you can map the colors differently on each tile that you're creating. So you can either tile, tile through scale or rotation and, and lower the samples. Uh, to a low amount. You can actually do this with a normal God Ray node as well, um, but I like his because he has that center point thing and it kind of goes in both directions. So um, yeah, go check that out for sure. Uh, but here's like some of the patterns I created using that technique. Um, I, at first I created the kind of, I don't know, rotated design here and then I just did a polar distort to create them in a flat kind of space. And of course these are animated. So if I step through, you'll see that there is animation uh, you know, on this. So same with all these, like I just did the same sort of technique, uh, in different ways and created some different designs, stuff like this. And then I would kind of pull or distort it to create like a flat version. And these we're going to use to stretch across these kind of, uh, crazy geometries and gravity sketch. So, uh, here's just a couple more examples of the type of things you can do if you're just playing around. And like I said, this is a really messy script. None of the nodes following concatenation or any of those rules that we have. It's just, it's purely just playing around, uh, you know, with different stuff here. So here's a few more textures that were created. So I had something that was kind of interesting like this. It looks kind of like a galaxy type of thing. You could, you could definitely create a galaxy from this effect if you wanted, but yeah, basically just kind of doing some rainbow stuff to get some color variation in there first. And then we can kind of, uh, yeah, polar distort this. So we get this nice texture that 
uh, is animated. So Gravity Sketch doesn't take animated geometry, uh, animated texture rather, but we can export one frame of this. We can design our geometry in Gravity Sketch using the material on it. And then we can bring that geometry back into Nuke and we can actually uh, take the animated version and kind of make it you know, go crazy on the, on the, uh, the surface. So essentially that's what we're doing. Um, and here's, here's another example. So we have like a, here's a shape like this, kind of animated like this. Um, and we can take and do this type of effect where we kind of uh, God ray it with a few samples and make, the, make a rainbow design. And then we can uh, pull or distort it so we get a flat uh, pattern again. And if you scrub through, you're gonna see that this is actually moving and it still has an interesting look. But I'll export one frame of this uh, into Gravity Sketch. So those are just a few examples. There's a bunch more here that I did um, of just random, random designs and stuff like that, uh, just playing around. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll hop into Gravity now and start showing how we can actually kind of create new designs with these. All right, so we are in Gravity Sketch. So I'm gonna start a new sketch here. And probably some of you guys have never seen the software, so I'll just briefly explain what it is and what it is that normally people are using it for. Um, so people are normally using this for uh, 3D modeling software. So you have like basic stuff like um, strokes. You can create these like kind of stuff like this. Um, and you can increase the brush size and we can create these like paths. Uh, you can also do like ink and stuff like this. So you may have seen Tilt Brush before, but maybe you've never heard of Gravity Sketch. So Gravity Sketch is more 3D modeling. So what's great about this is you can actually take the vertices. Uh, this is a NURB, so maybe it would be the surface points. But uh, yeah, we can basically take, the, take these points and you know, model different stuff here. So that's how, how it kind of works. But you also have really great tools like Revolve. So you can kind of take a point and rotate around an axis and kind of uh, create geometries like this. But you can start to see where we're starting to go with this. It's like if we can create these geometries, uh, what else could we do with this? It's, it's like, um, yeah, you could create models and cars and whatever it is that you're doing, which is mostly what it's intended for. But what Gravity Sketch allows you to do is actually bring in materials. So we can bring in some of those materials. I've exported this, a few of them here. And normally they're just used to be used as like materials on a model or just reference pictures. But if you load in reference pictures, so something like this, if I start pulling these off with my hand, I can actually grab them and I can put them off to the side. And as I start to do this, it actually loads these textures in as ones we can uh, wrap on the 3D models. So I'm gonna grab a few that I find interesting here. These are some of the ones I kind of put together in Nuke. If I just scale it up and we, and we look at it, it's just one of the effects with a basic color grade on it. And then these are the ones where I did some polar distorts and some other stuff. So we have those, uh, and then we can take, if we give it a second to load here, we'll let some of the other ones load here. So they load on the cloud and it's kind of connected. And so like even some of these, like this is just a basic color grade on some of these here, like this one. Um, and yeah, so what are we gonna do? We can basically set a material now. So in our, uh, we can actually uh, right click and press in the toggle and kind of select materials. So. Uh, basically, you can create these axes, and then I can start to revolve, and you see my texture will be wrapped onto that material. So you can really start to see where we're going to go with it. It's like, well, we can start to do really creative stuff and, and move our hand a lot, and we can create these multi-layered effects uh, really, really easily. So creating stuff like this, if you're creating like a jet engine or some kind of portal or whatever it is that you're doing, um, you can really design stuff in here and kind of stretch up and down in a way that you, you know, you're not going to loft and make curves in Maya or Houdini or something like this and design that. It's just not going to make sense because it's not as intuitive. And you're not going to see how the texture is actually stretching. But here you do. So keep in mind, even though this is a still image, uh, we can animate this in Nuke. So if we export that back to Nuke, we can animate the textures flowing on that path because it's UV uh, already in the correct way. So let's just continue with this. We can create some different designs here. We can try switching the pattern so we could go here and we could pull it along. And if you look at the design, we can we can really see. And this is all in stereo for me. So I'm seeing this all in, in true 3D. So it's really giving you a sense of depth and how you can you know design these things. And um, even if we weren't to use this as the final composite, this shape alone is very interesting. You see how we have all those layers uh, of parallax in there. We could use that as an engine on something. Um, so we can create new designs. 
And if we switch to another material, uh, we can switch to the surface. Surface is cool because it allows you to take your, two of your hands like this and you can drag out like this. And we can actually create uh, these geometries that are more like uh, surface. So we could try something different here. Let's try this one. Maybe this one's better. So you could really see, uh, you know, you could create like a shockwave type of thing. Uh, you maybe you could switch to a uh, revolve. And if you had like, you know, a character landing, you could go here and, you know, create that impact. And then you could create multiple levels of geometry to get uh, detailed layers basically in there. So we'll have those, those, those kind of, uh, you see we have depth in between those cards if we're kind of rotating between. So we can delete that. We can try some different stuff. Uh, stroke is kind of cool because you can uh, create polar symmetry. So you can create these uh, basically circles around a point. So we can kind of zoom out and we can design around this point. So if we wanted to create a wormhole, uh, you know, maybe we could start with, uh, you know, more of a revolve thing. We could just use one of these textures to preview what it's going to be like, something like this. Uh, the the um, the transparency in Gravity Sketch isn't perfect, by the way, so it's a little bit glitchy, but it still gives you a good idea. And then uh, we could just go here with another material. You know, I could do something like this, or let's try this one. I think this is the one that has, yeah, this one's kind of different. It has more of the kind of triangle stuff. <clears throat> so you can really start to see uh, how we can really come up with different designs here. And these are not final effects. We can, we can animate these in Nuke. Um, so let's try something else here. We could try surface, we could add on to this. So maybe we would go here with another material and maybe if it's bending space around it, it would kind of bend the light. So we could use this material here and sort of layered in. So you see the, the transparency is not working 100% there, but uh, we, can, we can kind of see it here. So let me just grab this piece. So I can kind of duplicate that around and that I could use in Nuke as a kind of refractive uh, edge of a wormhole. And I could kind of design this. Uh, and here you see we're not seeing it properly, but it is there. So, you know, uh, in this case, it's a little bit annoying because we, you know, we can move it back and or do whatever, but you can create different designs like this. So it's just a really, really interesting way to work and there's different things you can do with it. Uh, play around with it. Uh, it's a definitely a new way to work. This, this kind of working that way of working never existed before, but, um, you know, doing these revolves and doing these different layers here, we could try another material. So let's bring another material in. Uh, go to the materials. Give it a second to uh, download. We can grab, so I have some particle ones here, some lasers, I have this one as well. Kind of cool, this one's pretty cool as well. So I could try this and then, you know, well, let's make sure we switch it. So something like this, and then when you're flying through, uh, if this was transparent in the right way, we would be able to see um, some of that stuff that's on the outside. So maybe this material is not uh, set up correctly with transparency, but let's see. So we have looking through there, and then we can add the, the stuff around. So what I'm trying to say is uh, the key about this is you can get those levels of parallax that would be kind of difficult to do uh, directly. Um, in, in other ways. So if we're flying through, we can see those things around, we can see them above, and we have that sense of 3D. So if we're moving a camera through this, these objects will move uh, at a le lesser speed. So we can spend a lot of time designing it, or we could go in here and we could uh, animate around the inner edges. So we could actually zoom ourselves out and kind of uh, take, a, take a material and animate around these inner rings so that when we're flying through, uh, you know, we can create different effects that we're going to see as we're going through this, this sort of wormhole. So, I mean, just using my hands and grabbing and scaling basically right now, uh, which gives me a pretty good sense of the, the depth there. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it uh, in terms of what you can do. There's all kinds of stuff. Uh, you can spend a lot of time making like really good designs and this is me just like playing around and everything. You could even make some galaxies and stuff like that if you were to just duplicate these like crazy. 
you know, you could just duplicate a whole bunch of stuff. And then, you know, that's something you could export right back into Nuke and uh, work it into a higher quality level. But, you know, let's just see. You could do something like this and you could mix in different layers. So, you know, there's all kinds of stuff you could do. And if you flew a camera, camera through this in Nuke, it's already more interesting than flat cards because you have all these layers of depth. So really awesome way to just sketch out uh, effects and, and design different things. So hopefully you guys found the video interesting or useful and hit the like button if you did. And that's about it.